Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and uh, in this video, we're going to talk about why you might see some sand scratches through the paint after you had painted something. Uh, there's a couple reasons we're going to go over. First, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. I know this has been a lot different for all of us, having to stay at home as much as possible. Uh, not many places open, you know, so it's been a lot different that we're all having to adjust to. I know a couple months ago, I didn't know what Zoom really was. And I've been using that more than ever now. You know, I'm using it for meetings, uh, advisory meetings, just everything revolves around S Zoom. If you don't know what it is, it's kind of like Skype. It's a little bit better quality than Skype. I've uh, been collaborating with some other instructors, uh, like with uh, Bill Bacon. Uh, we've been doing some, uh, he's been teaching some lessons, helping me teach some les lessons on here. We did a Kahoot. We plan on doing another one Thursday. I don't know the exact time again, but if, you, if you're on my channel, you'll see that there's a live video that pops up and uh, you'll be able to play that. The way that works is you'll see, you'll have to watch it on screen, the questions, and then you'll have to dial in with your phone with the cahoots, and we'll explain it whenever we, when we go live with that, and then you can play, and it goes by who gets the most correct answers and who's the fastest. It's pretty fun. Done it one time, and we plan on doing that again, but we're having to get real creative out here, you know, how to bring content to you, uh, especially the students that are at home and, and maybe not have a, a lot of resources out there, so Anyway, we're doing what we can. It's a uh, different times for everyone and, and not everyone really has all the answers. So, but anyway, I'm going to get back to my question. Uh, let me see. Let me come over here just for a second. Uh, Carl says, so working on my first paint job and must not have sanded well enough since sanding marks are shown through the color. What is the proper way to fix this? Reprime? I've tried wet sanding and buffing and no luck. So that is a good question, and that is something that happens a lot. I've had it happen to me. There's a couple of answers that, that could be the possibility. Uh, the first one I'll talk about, maybe you sanded uh, with something that was too coarse. And if you, if you sand with something that's too coarse and try to paint it, you're going to see that, that metallic and the paint and the pigment's going to soak down in those scratches, and you're going to see where those sand scratches was made. So to, to prevent that from happening, what you want to do is uh, – sand it with from anywhere from four to 600, 400, 500, 600 grit. You know, that's pretty good ranges to final sand something to get it ready for paint. If it was 320 or 220, that could be the cause is that it was way too coarse for that. So uh, that could be the problem. Now, another problem I want to talk about is uh, rushing your primer. Uh, if you hose on too much primer too fast, you get it on there and you get it block sanded out and it hasn't fully cured yet, hadn't fully dried. And you might paint it. It might, after you trap so many solvents down in there, it might take it a couple of weeks to fully cure. Well, if you get a block sanded, it may look great. You may paint it and it still looks good. And then the sand scratches appear, you know, a couple weeks down the line. And what has happened is uh, you may have put too much primer on or too much without flash. And as that primer dries and cures, it kind of sucks up in those scratches. It's called sand scratch swelling. And that's where you can come back and you can kind of see the scratches in your body filler uh, that way. So a couple different ways that that could happen. One of those two ways is probably the, the problem you was having. So, so what do you do if that does happen? Well, you know, one of the things you can do, you've tried uh, sanding and buffing. You, you mentioned you've tried that and it didn't work. A lot of times, if, uh, if it's not too bad, you can come and sand it, level it out and buff it uh, and get rid of that. However, if they're, if they're too bad and you have to sand too much clear off, uh, you don't want to do that because the mills of the clear will be too thick and later it'll probably peel off, you know, as the UV eats at it. So if you have to sand too much, you're probably going to have to repaint it. Now, I don't think you'll have to reprime unless the scratches is really, really deep because probably you've got the material on there. You've got the, the sealer, if you use sealer on there, primer sealer, and then you've got the base coat on top of that, and then the clear coat on top of that, unless it was single stage. You still got all that uh, piled on top of that surface, that substrate, so you can kind of use that as a primer. Uh, get you some guide coat and spray on there and sand it till all those scratches are out. Now, if you completely sand through the base coat and you start seeing a primer or whatever color is underneath, uh, then probably they are too deep. And then you may have to come back and prime that spot again and then block sand that primer out one more time. But uh, if, if you've tried the buffing and sanding and that didn't work, probably your next step is to just try to block it out. Uh, and if you can't get rid of the scratches after doing that, you probably are going to have to prime and block again. 
So, but just remember, whenever you go to finish sand it, final sand it, get it ready for paint. Uh, try to finish it out anywhere between 400 and 600. So that might help you out. So is everybody staying safe out there? Uh, it's quite a bit different. I know I was talking to some shops out there and uh, it's really slowed down for them. So it's, uh, it's kind of affecting everyone. I mean, they are considered an essential business. I mean, people do have to get their cars repaired to get to where they need to be. But uh, a lot of people's, well, with less people out, you know, there's less accidents. They are having minor accidents. They're just waiting right now until things get better. So uh, it's quite different than what we're used to. So let's see what we got on here. Uh, how is you? I'm, I'm doing good. How's your blood? I, yeah, I think it's red. Uh, sup? Not much. Just uh, trying to answer a few of these questions. I had this question, and that would be a lot to answer on text or type or anything like that. And I thought it'd just be better to get on there on a, on a quick live video and explain that, you know, because that is a it, it's a problem everybody's probably had, especially trying to rush it. And you think you're you're speeding up time by putting on too much primer too fast, but actually you're you're just trapping all those solvents, and it takes it a while to cure, and, and, and shrinks back into those scratches. If that was the cause, you know, it could be one of those two causes, and uh, it could be something else. You know, I haven't had experience with. And there's always something new I'm learning every day. I guarantee you in this business. So, let's see. Hello, uh, new to body work. And my teacher could not answer this question regarding POR 15. Do I put body filler under or on top of the POR 15? Well, probably what I would do, POR 15 is help, helps. Uh, it's a couple stage stages. You know, first you put that wash, the acid wash on it that kind of helps uh, get the preps, the metal. It's like, I think it's called the marine wash. I mean, it comes in the step and then you put the POR 15 on. Now, normally that is like for areas that you're not really finishing out, like your frames, your uh, maybe your firewalls, your insides, because any uh, POR 15 is not UV uh, protected. It has to have something applied on top. So if it is on the outside of your car, you do still have to paint it. So if it's a frame or something like that, some of those type of components, you don't have to. But if you're, uh, I guess you're, you're I, I would not put the POR 15 and then body filler. Uh, pro probably what I would do, if it's something that you've got to do a lot of body work to, you know, I don't know if you're having it sandblasted or it's going to be all metal. I, first thing I'd probably put on is just some epoxy primer. And then you can do your body work and you can put body filler on top of epoxy primer. Uh, of course, it will have to be sanded. You don't want to uh, put it on there when it's not sanded, but you can put it on top of epoxy. If it's a, a, a frame or something that you that you're not going to see um i would probably go ahead and uh, if you're using the por 15 i'd probably coat everything but i would come back in that area that you need to repair and i'd go ahead and grind all that off because i don't think i don't think there's any recommendations for putting body filler on top of por 15 that i know of uh, and again you know i've uh, i've used it before i've done a video on it but uh, I'm not a restoration guy. I don't do that all the time. So if some of you are and some of you want to, you know, give some feedback on here and tell, you know, what you do in a situation like this, you uh, feel free to leave us a comment. Let's see. Let's see. Still doing lives consistently. First I've seen in a bit. You know, off and on, I got busy with school. And now that we have... Uh, I've been doing a lot more lately, not not all of them live. I believe the last one was about a week ago, and it's where we did that uh, Cahoots game with uh, uh, Bill Bacon, and we got on there and played that Cahoots game. But I haven't had as many of them. Most of them have been pre-recorded. I've done some uh, interviews with different people, you know, just trying to get information out there about the industry and, you know, the opportunities out there and uh, th things like that. And, of course, the, the lessons that I'm collaborating with with uh, Bill on, or we, we record on Zoom, and then later recorded onto YouTube. So it's not been real consistent. It's kind of been off and on. So, uh, but more than more than I had been, because there for a while I got really busy and, and didn't really have a lot of time to to do YouTube videos. But my I kind of live around it now. So until until things change a little bit, we're kind of all stuck here. So let's see what else. What outside temp should I wait for spray dryer at home? You know, I wouldn't want to spray anywhere under 
me personally, like 60 degrees, that's pretty cold, you know, because your metal's pretty cold. Uh, you could probably spray a little bit colder than that. But remember, if you can get you one of those little gauges that uh, are one of those temperature gauges that you hit the trigger and it takes a reading from it, uh, use one of those because chances are the metal is colder and then what the temperature is outside. So you want to make sure like if you pull it in a garage that the metal does have a chance to get up to the temperature that the garage is and that could take a while sometimes. So um, yeah, anything under 60 is pretty cold. Uh, where it actually probably depends on the brand where it'll actually cr cross link and, and dry, uh, you know, that might vary a little bit, but 60 is pretty cold. I'd wait till, you know, 70s. You know, that, that would be even better. Okay. Well, mostly I was just going to get on there and answer that one question. Uh, I know I've got some other ones out there. I just haven't uh, got to those yet. Uh, have been busy doing other videos and, and things like that. We have been having about uh, two or three videos a week, if not more here uh, recently. Like you pointed out, a lot of them are not live. But uh, they, you know, they've been pre-recorded and those actually take more time, you know, because you got to record it and then you got to come back and edit it and then you got to submit it up to YouTube. Uh, these are a lot faster. Uh, they catch a lot of stuff that maybe you don't, wouldn't normally edit out. So they're not quite as clean as a recorded video. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, I haven't been doing quite as many. Let's see. Is applying metal etch and epoxy primer the same? You can do either or. There's no need to do both. Uh, they're both to protect the metal. They're for corrosion protection. If you're putting uh, epoxy primer on there, there's no need to put epoxy or, or self etch primer. There's no need to put epoxy. Vice versa, if you're putting epoxy, there's no need for self etch. So both of those primers are designed just for metal and it's to provide corrosion protection. And then once that's applied, you can put your primer sealer and get it ready to paint or your primer surfacer if it's an area you got to sand and buff or whatever top coat you're going with next. Uh, one thing with a uh, self-etch, you don't want to put base coat straight on top of that. If you're using that, you do want to use a primer sealer to seal that spot and get the right gray shade. And uh, so you don't really want to put base coat straight on top of that. Now, now uh, epoxy, if, if that is the right uh, gray shade, you know, the underneath color, uh, that's fine. You can you can spray uh, base coat straight on top of that. Let it flash for 30 minutes or whatever the recommend, recommendation is for that brand. And you can put base coat straight on top of that. So, See, I'm in Washington Outdoor DIY. I stop at 50 to 60 degrees. So I'm excited right now. Now it's 65. So, yeah, he says that at, uh, anything colder than a... Anything colder than 50 to 60 degrees, he recommends stopping. This is in Washington. He, uh, and he says it's 65 right now, and he's really excited. So, you know, maybe, you know, 65 is a pretty good. Does that work pretty well for you? I would say anything under 50, definitely not. Uh, 50 to 60, I mean, you're going to you're gonna have a problem maybe getting a run, or you really have to wait a long time between your flash coats. If it says wait 10 to 15 minutes between fat flash coats, that means you're going to have to wait, you know, at least uh, double that, you know, if it's real cold because that stuff is not going to be dry near as fast. Turn this down. Well, um, using shop line. I've used a lot of shop line. I have no problem with shop line. Uh, it works well. Uh, that what that is, if you don't know, it's a kind of the lower line of what PPG paint is. Uh, it's their lower line. And, and a lot of times what you're paying for, I mean, they the PPG, like the Deltron, is a little bit more expensive. It's a little better quality. But what PPG does, like they have one color and maybe, you know, they paint at different factories, the same color code, but there might be a difference or, you know, there's a number of reasons why they might be a little different. And they get some complaints about this color not matching. So PPG will go and, and, and research that and say, well, there's a certain amount of cars out there that have this variance. It's slightly different, uh, might be a little bit bluer or brighter or whatever. You know, there's a lot of different uh, variants. And then the, so they'll make a variant for it. 
And then they have color decks where you can go out there and pick which variant is the closest. And I've seen some colors with like eight to 10 variances. And that could be what plant they was painted at. It could be uh, what, uh, you know, spraying conditions with something, maybe one system wasn't cleaned as well or something. There was a, a little hint of red in there. And whenever it sprayed so many amount of cars, that red was getting in there. So that would be a red variant. So there's a lot of different reasons at the manufacturer why there might be different variants like that. So uh, that that's that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of research, and uh, you know a lot of, a lot of money to go out and and uh, and research those colors and make variances. And that's what you're paying for, like with PPG and your and your higher end colors. Now, like Shopline, they don't do that. You know, whatever that color was from the factory, you, that's the prime color, and you just get that one variant. So if it doesn't match just perfect, uh, you're going to, uh, let me just turn this off. It just keeps on going off. Let's see. Well, So like with Prime uh, shop line, you're just getting that one Prime. So it's not that it's that much of a, I mean, it is a lesser quality, but you're not paying for all that research that is done either. And promotion, you know, uh, the, those lower lines don't spend near the amount on marketing and those types, sort of things. So. Yes. Uh, so applying body filler on top of epoxy, Will be better than a, than applying on top of metal etch. Yes, you do not want to. Uh, body fillers basically designed to be used over. Uh, some of them can be used over OEM paints as long as you don't sand through the like the clear coat. Uh, some of them are designed for metal and uh, epoxy primer, but they're not really designed to be uh, applied over different types of primers and especially etch primer because a uh, metal self etch primer has an acid in it. That acid could uh cause an adhesion problem. So you don't want to use body filler over that etch primer for sure. Uh, the most friendly, uh, if you're if you're doing a, a project at your house, restoration, anything like that, probably uh, epoxy is going to be the, the way you want to go, you know, because it will go on top of almost anything. It's really compatible over your body filler, your primer layers, you know, your base coat and your top coat, you know, it'll go over all, all those with no problem. And you can put a lot of products on top of it. So it's real compatible. Uh, self edge, you know, it's it's designed really just for the metal. You don't want to get too much on your body filler. It might cause some lifting, or the layers of your paint might cause some lifting. You want to put real dry coats on so you don't get it on real wet, because if you do, it may attack the edges of your body filler or the edges of your paint and make them lift. So, but no, you, it's really not recommended to put uh, body filler on top of self edge primer. That can cause problems. All right. Well, it looks like we've got everything pretty well answered tonight. Uh, if you have other uh, questions or comments uh, after this is over, uh, it won't be over here on the side, but you can go down below and uh, you can be able to ask questions there later or comments or have some type of feedback. I do thank you for watching. And uh, let's see, make sure that the epoxy is cured. You don't want to. OK, yeah. Make sure the epoxy is cured. You don't want to uh, filler over gummy epoxy. And Yeah, you want to make sure the epoxy is dried and cured. And then you're going to want to sand it. You know, you don't want it just uh, slick on there. You want to rough it up a little bit. So, but I'll go on that just for a minute. Uh, reason I was talking about these restoration guys, they may sandblast the whole vehicle. And you really don't want to be touching with your fingers that metal, especially when it's porous like that, because it'll start rusting. So a lot of times, you know, the best thing to do if it's all metal like that, come in and just epoxy the whole thing before you even do your body work get it all coated and protected. Then you can come back, even if you have to do some grinding to, to straighten the metal and applying body filler, or if it's just a little small dent, you're going to apply body filler, you know, you can scuff it up and put some body filler on top. So yeah, that's, that's a good point. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and call that good for this video. If you have more questions below, uh, leave them down in the comment section and uh, be looking probably Thursday. I don't have the exact time, probably 6.30 or 7. I need to get with uh, Bill because he's the one that's kind of uh, got the cahoots and, and knows how to work all that. So uh, I'm just helping him scream it on this channel on YouTube uh, live. And uh, there, it, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of a delay, but, you know, it worked out pretty good last time. And I think a lot of students had a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you in the next video.